order to fulfill the objectives of physical anthropology, physical anthropologists take the help from other sciences such as biology, demography, ecology, forensic science, etc. Let's see the relationship of these sciences with physical anthropology. Number one, the relationship of physical anthropology with biology. In their journey of reconstructing the evolutionary history and attempt to understand the various nodes of and adapt it among people in different parts of the globe, physical anthropologists take the help and privileges of utilizing modern methods and techniques of genetics, physical chemical study, growth and nutritional study. Because of using such biological oriented topics, physical anthropology is now sometimes known as biological anthropology. This shift of emphasizing on such topics occurred largely because of advancement in the field of genetics since the late 1950s. However, the areas of interest of human biologists and biological anthropologists are different, though there are intersected areas. Both of the specialists study human physiology, genetics, adaptation. But human biology does not include the study of human and his near non-human primates from evolutionary perspectives, which are the trust area of physical anthropology. The human biologists also do not pay attention on the influence of biology on culture and vice and versa. Population genetic studies about genetic composition of populations by examining the frequencies of different genes in the population. The changes in such genes over a time period is the microevolutionary process, which are the subject matter of physical anthropologists. Molecular anthropologists use the advanced technology of biology by extracting DNA sequences of different populations. They even compare the DNA of living primates with living human and fossil findings. Osteology is the branch of biology which studies about bone. Physical anthropologists are trained to this field for examination and analyzing of primate fossils to throw light on evolution and variation. Moreover, the study of disease and trauma on fossil skeletons, which is known as paleopathology, helps understanding the prevalence of trauma, certain infectious diseases, nutritional deficiency of fossils. Physical anthropologists also study about environment and ecology to know the role of physical environments like heat, cool, sunshine, etc. on human growth, development, variation and adaptation. The knowledge of primatologists who study about primates and etologists who study about the behavior of animals are helpful for understanding such topics like human evolution, origin of language and the like. The study of flora and fauna of prehistoric times throw light on climate, food habit and structure of the animals such as dentition and a body hair. It also helps in dating these past findings through relevant dating methods based on the material finds. The study of growth and nutrition health and hair related issues of physical anthropology and medical sciences have similar common area of interest. Let's see the relationship of physical anthropology with demography. Demography is the science of studying population. It studies about population structure, population composition, etc. Factors like birth, date, age, sex, migration, etc. are discussed for a point or pair of time of a single or different populations. In order to understand biological variation between and among populations, physical anthropologists since long time back have been using physical measurements of body and its parts. With the development of the science of genetics, they also use blood groups, hemoglobins, serum proteins, and red cell enzymes to understand genetic composition of the populations. Some geneticists will find that the studies of these genetical characters are more ideally suitable as they are relatively unaffected by environmental factors for studying quantitative genetics 
analysis and comparison of human populations. Morrell and his followers in 1976 has suggested that the study of both morphology and genetics should be more used because of the availabilities of mathematical techniques for comparing population. In addition to such studies, the study of the role of demographic data, their impact on genetic makeup, by looking into accepted mating patterns and migration factors are very significant for examining microevolutionary process and its strain of sands. In short, we can say that demographic characters like fertility, mortality, migration, population size and distribution, age and sex composition acted upon the genetic constitution and vice versa. All these process lead to the constitution of biological characteristics of the population expressed through phenotypes. One simple example is the onset of menarche and menopause that influence fertility and hence demographic structures of a population. The onset of menarche and menopause is determined by heredity and environmental factors. Not only looking from the evolutionary and population and variation point of view, the study of demography is very useful for health perspective of anthropology. Observation of different health survey by considering both genetic and environmental related diseases, physical anthropology reveal the morbidity, mortality, and fertility of populations and shows its relation in regard to population structure. These findings are practically useful and incorporated to the health planners. Next, let's see the relationship of physical anthropology with ecology. Ecology is defined as a study of entire assemblages of living organisms and their physical milieus, which together constitute integrated systems. This is a definition as put forward by James and Anderson. Man, as a biocultural animal, interacts with his ecology for food and nutritional requirements, health and diseases, adaptation to different physical environments, and so on. His whole existence is influenced and is supported by soil, sunshine, temperature, humidity, barometric pressure, water, food, and so on. He is living in his physical environment. The study of him, therefore, needs to know these factors that make and influence him. Let's see how people adapt to different particular environments. The response to the stresses of environment is through mechanisms like learned culture, through physiologically developed short-term mechanism or of long-term basis, and through development of genetic characteristics of a population through the process of natural selection. For instance, in some populations, the presence of a single allele for abnormal hemoglobin H improves the survival chances of a child exposed to falciparum malaria. We can also see the relationship of physical anthropology with ecology from the perspective of adaptability and human variation. We can see the influence of cold, hot, sunshine and altitude to the easily visible parts of human body. Not only visible parts, even invisible genetic markers like blood groups are found to be naturally selected in certain ecological setup. The findings of the F. Roberts studies in mean body weight of human populations inhabiting widely different temperatures have supported the rule. Research of comparing populations tend to support another rule known as Allen's rule, which says that limbs of birds and mammals living in colder areas are prone to relatively shorter than those living in the warmer areas. Another rule, Gloger's rule, states that Populations of birds and mammals living in warmer climates have more melanin and hence darker skin, fur, or feathers than the populations of the same species living in cooler climatic areas. Though there are little variations, the findings are also true among the mammals with human beings. In support of this rule, the recent work of anthropologists Nina Zablonsky and Zell Sablin used data from NASA satellites to determine the average amount of ultraviolet radiation people were exposed to in different parts of the world. They compare 
this average radiation amount to data on scale reflectance that reflects more like on lighter skin and found that dark skin is more prevalent where ultraviolet radiation is more intense. People living in high altitudes because of low barometric pressure, though the percent of air is same in lower altitude, breath more rapidly and faster, a condition known as hypoxia. Because of hypoxia, Highland Indian peoples have more larger cells and greater lung capacity than people living in low altitude. Besides the above mentioned concepts and topics, physical and flozy in relation to ecology considers man's harsh anthropogenic action on ecology for meeting his selfish ends. Man with his highly effective culture and technology have drastically altered ecosystem, thereby posing serious threat like violation to other organisms that also belong to this planet with us. Such issues like global warming, zoom cultivation, changes in flora and fauna and ecology, and its impact on different groups of people through the process of modernization are also topics of interest to anthropologists. Lastly, let's see the relationship of physical anthropology with forensic science. To the public mind, anthropology is often perceived as that branch which studies about the quid customs and traditions of prelater tribes, about bone and stone tools, apes and monkeys. But anthropology is a vast discipline. It studies mankind in time and space, from that dim remote animal ancestral stage in prehistoric period to people in highly mechanized society in every part of the world, from that coldest part to the hottest part of the globe. And there are certain areas what general people are unaware of. One such field is forensic anthropology, one of the sub-branches of physical anthropology. The role of forensic anthropology is to recover and identify human remains and to determine the time, cause and manner of that. They have been involved in numerous cases of medical legal and human disaster. They play instrumental role in identifying the skeletons of most of the Russian imperial family executed in 1918 and many of them participated in identifying the remaining of victims of the September 11, 2001 terror attacks in the United States. Forensic anthropology is used for solving crimes of various sorts by scientific analysis of bodily remains and other materials found at the crime sports. Both forensic anthropology and forensic science have intersected areas such as determination of age, sex, stature estimation, reconstruction of face identity for identification, more and cause of death of the victims in crimes, ranging from the examination of traditional materials like here, body marks, ornaments, finger and palm prints, to modern highly developed DNA profiling, are activities of these applied sciences. However, forensic science, in comparison to forensic anthropology, is larger in scope and has more wider application. Thus, we have seen that physical anthropology is related with biology, demography, ecology, and forensic science.